Welcome back to Whiskey Cooking Show. My name is Charlotte. I come from a patisserie and private chef background, and I'm here to share with you my knowledge about cooking and baking through step-by-step -step food videos every week. I hope this channel can act as a platform for me to share my love for food and for all of you to learn something useful that you can apply in your own food adventures. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below as well. So in the last video, we did some serious business and we baked the best Devil Double Chocolate Chip Sea Salt Cookie. And today, let's take the cookies to the next level by adding our homemade salted caramel on it. Even if you have eaten all the cookies, no worries, because learning how to make your own salted caramel is such a great skill to have. As you can basically use caramel in all sorts of sweet treats. Put it on ice cream, layer it in cakes as cupcake toppings, or you can even make your own salted caramel buttercream, and the list just goes on and on and on. Learn with me a few tricks in this video, and I promise you a good batch of salted caramel every time with no fails. With no fails. Alert! Making caramel can be very dangerous, so please be careful here. Don't try to use your finger to touch the caramel at any point of the cooking because they can get extremely hot even though they don't look like it. Well, if luck isn't on your side that day and caramel finds its way to land on your skin, here is what you're gonna do. First, immediately run the burnt area through ice cold water for a few minutes to cool the skin. Second, once the burn has cooled off and after the pain has slightly relieved, you should probably check on the unattended stove and turn off the heat. That is to say if no one else has done that for you yet. Third, apply burn cream or lotion to moisturize the damaged area. Finally, take a break and rest. We will make the caramel another day. Well, if you're ready, let's start cooking. Let's take a look at the ingredients list. Please make sure you gather and measure all the ingredients before you start making your caramel. Because, well, making caramel is like cooking a steak. Things happen so fast like you're caught in the middle of a thunderstorm and it's done before you even realize it. But well, it's not gonna happen today because we will come prepared. So this is what we're gonna do in this video. Instead of telling you all the rules from the start and let you forget all about them, I'm going to take you through the steps of making salted caramel and explain the rules and tips in the process. First, start by making a wet caramel. Put in water and sugar in a deep heavy duty pot and turn on medium high heat to let the sugar melt completely. Rule number one, use the deep pot to cook your caramel because the caramel will bubble up fiercely when you add in the butter and cream and you would appreciate the extra height to prevent the hot caramel from spilling out. Right after that, we may pour heavy cream into a saucepan separately and gently heat it up. Once it comes to a near boil, turn off the heat and set aside for later use. The reason why we heat up the cream is that we want to avoid too much splattering when we pour the cream into the hot caramel. The same principle applies to the butter, and this is why we're using room temperature butter as well. Rule number two, use warm cream and room temperature butter to make your caramel to avoid splattering. Essentially, making caramel is the caramelization of sugar, and for this recipe, we're starting with a wet caramel where sugar is dissolved in water, then cooks to caramelized. Wet caramel, compared with dry caramel that is just made with sugar, is a lot easier to handle for beginners. Because when the sugar is first melted in water to become sugar syrup, there's less chance for the sugar crystals to clump together, and no clumps means no grainy caramel. So here goes our rule number three. Use wet caramel to help sugar melt evenly and avoid grainy texture. It takes a good 5 to 8 minutes for the sugar syrup to change color, but don't go anywhere else and please keep your eyes on the pot, because once all the water content has evaporated, the sugar will caramelize very quickly and color will start to change from clear to brown and amber. So rule number 4, no toilet bricks when making caramel. Once you start seeing a slight color change in your syrup, swirl the pot around gently to redistribute the syrup content. However, don't stir the syrup with any tool at this point because now that the syrup is very saturated, any agitation will cause the sugar to crystallize again, producing a grainy result. So rule number five, don't stir your syrup during caramelization to avoid sugar crystallization. Now it's time to add in our butter and the cream. Things will still bubble up, but don't worry, just gently stir it with your spatula now 
and take your pot off heat so that your caramel won't get burned. Sprinkle some sea salt if you're making salted caramel. But just be patient and let your caramel cool down to room temperature and it will thicken up. Rule number 6. Stop cooking caramel after butter and cream and let it cool down completely for ideal consistency. So this is our salted caramel. Thank you for spending time with me today. I hope next time when you have to make salted caramel, you don't have to panic anymore. I'll see you next week. or you can even